Well, the first question I have is, what does it feel to work in one of the biggest franchises of popular culture? It's terrifying. <laughs> because you're not, it's, it's, it's so much more than pop culture where <clears throat> it's pop culture, but then it's film history. And then it's an icon of cinema. <clears throat> and and it, it, in a lot of ways is the film that I think inspired you know, Harryhausen and, and thus Star Wars and just like that, you know, it, it, it is so close to the origin of sort of like special effects and genre storytelling in the origins of cinema. So you're playing with this incredibly tricky thing. <clears throat> and so there's this huge challenge to A, not be the guy that screws it up. Like you don't want to be that guy. <clears throat> and then B, find what people love about the character and the franchise, but then you've got to do something new with it. You know, like we've seen the same remake over and over again, so there was an enormous responsibility to, to not only like not screw up the character and be the guy that was like, oh yeah, he made the really shitty King Kong movie, but then, but then to like do something new, mm -hmm. you know, to, to like do something fresh that <laughs> audiences feel like they haven't seen before. When people first experienced the 1933 Kong, mm -hmm. Like, I've never seen that. You know what I mean? Like, how often do you go to the movies now and you say, oh my God, I've never seen that before? Yeah. Not a lot. And so I wanted to have people have that same reaction when they watch this. Oh. <laughs> Actually, you made it. <laughs> so uh, in your movie, there's uh, this idea that uh, humankind destroy everything. Uh, what did you think about this? I mean, it's in there because of me. <laughs> so... <coughs> um, no, I, look, A, I didn't feel comfortable playing with the imagery of the Vietnam War without making some sort of statement. I think that's like incredibly charged imagery and I don't think you can just go and play with that uh, for no reason. Mm -hmm. And B, I just think that uh, we as humans frequently need to reflect upon ourselves and it's much easier to reflect upon ourselves in the past than, than what it is currently. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the Vietnam War and the 70s in general and everything that we were going through at that time is a very scary black mirror to everything happening right now in the world, or at least in America. And um, I think that we need to really reflect upon the way we live our lives. Kong's pretty good, King. Keeps to himself mostly. Well, you don't go into someone's house and start dropping bombs unless you're picking a fight. We see creatures that can be in our worst nightmares. Was there any particular reason to choose those monsters? I wanted all the creatures to have a, A, I wanted them all to feel like you haven't seen them before. <laughs> we went through thousands and thousands of sketches and, and I would show them to people and say, have you, have you seen this before? And if someone was like, yeah, it feels like that thing from, and before they could even finish, I would just throw it out. <laughs> and it would never come back. Okay. Um, because it, it felt like such a failure as a film if you've, if you've seen the beasts before. So I wanted them to feel original, but then it was later that sort of uh, Miyazaki's work and something like uh, Princess Mononoke or Spirited Away um, really sort of influenced what I was doing because I wanted them to have this cross section of, <coughs> I wanted the island and the creatures to simultaneously have this feel of like thinking, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And then, peeing your pants because you don't know if it's going to kill you or not, you know? And like, I was so interested in that dichotomy. And so th that's sort of how we approached it. And it was very Miyazaki influenced <coughs> and very sort of like uh, mythical in its influence and very Asian in its influence. What could you tell me about this link between uh, Kong and Weaver? I mean, in the majority of Kong movies, we see this kind of connection between the monkey and a woman. Uh, but in this case, what does it mean? Well, one of the things that we very explicitly tried to not do in this film was tell the Beauty and the Beast story. <laughs> because, because we've seen it many, many times. Yeah. So that was one of the first things that I rejected when trying to make this film. <clears throat> However, there's, there is a huge component of unraveling Kong's empathy and unraveling his emotion and unraveling his sensitive side. And you know, Weaver, who's Brie Larson's character, has a she's sort of a conduit for that. She's the person <coughs> helping that happen. But unlike previous Kong movies, it's not because this gorilla has fallen in love with this girl. She just happens to be the only human who is 
able to bridge that gap. You know, to, it's less about a male-female connection, and then it's more about a, uh, a bridge between man and beast and man and God. And, and so it's, you know, it, it's just not the traditional sort of, I'm in love with this woman. In the movie, um, there's a peaceful civilization, and they have, like, communist characteristic. Was this on purpose? Most, most villager representations in all of the Kong films have been in some way uh, racist. Uh, and one thing that I was very <clears throat> sensitive to was I not only wanted to avoid that, but I actually wanted to do something completely different with them where they were almost enlightened beyond us and they had their, their things figured out. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would call it like socialist or communist. <laughs> um, I think there are very like libertarian ideas okay. in there. <laughs> okay. um, <clears throat> But yes, the, the, I, I love the idea that like us with our modern technology and the lives that we live and the, the things that we think we have figured out, we have zero understanding of ourselves and our relationship to nature and our relationship to each other. Um, and so I, love, I just love the idea of them being sort of this heightened.